Merry Christmas everybody, this is Jim, so check this out. This row of Transformers is growing while shrinking, shrinking while growing, eight different phases. Okay, so it's making a 16 step sine wave, eight on each side by using square waves and it's all hooked up in series, the outputs. And if you center tap it, you get 90 degrees and 90 degrees phase difference between the two sides. One's growing as one's shrinking, one's shrinking as one's growing, and it's giving back. So it's supposed to be all reactive. Okay. Power supply is locked at 10 volts. I'm not going to mess with that. Now that power supply likes to jump around amperage, but I'm watching the amperage on the power supply here. Okay. That's the amperage. Now... My theory is, while well, this is oscillating, while well, one's growing and one's shrinking, making alternating current, and this one grows and this one shrinks exactly equal, right? It creates reaction where it's giving it back to the other side and it's giving it back to the other side. And the way AC works, it's giving it back to the side that's growing and it's giving it back to the side that's growing and it's giving it back to the side that's growing and it gets to reuse that energy. So according to my philosophies, I'm thinking I could tap this again and again and again and again and again and not load the input and you can keep using the same current in the circuit okay so here i have three boost converters hooked up on the output bridge rectifier off the series bridge rectifier connecting to my terminals they go to three boost converters right now i have one boost converter hooked up on diodes because i don't know if these have internal diodes and i don't want to feed positive voltage back into them so i have one boost converter hooked up coming out to the multimeter which goes up and through and goes to a six volt battery okay i don't have these perfect because they change a lot and it's i have to do something better but anyway this is my input current coming in okay and what i'm charging this battery currently is 0.064 at six volts okay i'm way under obviously and now watch the interesting thing i'm going to take a second output right 0.064 Trying to get that so it don't touch. Okay, it's not touching. Okay, that just jumped. Now I'm charging this battery with 100 milliamps. And look at my input. Same. I didn't gain any input. It's not passing to the input that extra. 0.099. I don't want that to touch. Okay, now let's get another one. Let's get the third one. Let's go all the way over here so it ain't going to touch. Remember, it's at 0 0.099. Boom. 120. Okay, keep jumping this charging to this battery higher and higher and higher. Now look at my input. Okay, so this went from 70 to 120. So I'm going to take this off, 100, I'm going to take this off, okay, 0 0.062, 51, okay, my input amperage is 510 milliamps, enough to excite this field, but after this is excited, it shouldn't really pass anything back to the source if everything's perfect. Now, there's going to be a little bit of imperfectness, okay, so I'm at 62. 0.51 amps. I'm going to connect the second one again. Jump to 100 milliamps. 0.51. Input's not rising. Next one. I take this output again. And connect it. I got three outputs. Almost 120. So from 60 to 120, I just doubled. I just doubled. The output going to this battery uh, almost doubled, maybe 45% or something. I didn't do the math, but a nice hunk jumped it up to charge this even quicker. And guess what? The input is practically the same. I didn't go up double on my input when I took double here. You see that? Because the circuit is giving it back while it's giving it back while it's giving it back. When, when one a, Because it's eight separate phases making one alternating current wave which is a modified square wave 
but it's so designed where the eight different phases shift the output 45 degrees. So therefore it becomes 100% reactive. And they say reactive power is useless, that you can't do nothing with reactive power, except it's charging a battery. No doubt about that. So I'm thinking I have to optimize this better and figure out a little more. But I'm thinking you could take this output because all this output is one single bridge rectifier just going to this with eight terminals now i could take this again and again and again and again and again and again and again because anything you're taking is giving back to the other side of the 90 degrees phase shift while one side's growing one side shrinking it's ping-ponging back and forth and you're able to use that because these are actually you know boost converters are actually like transformers practically and it's Sending the Lorentz reciprocal back to the other side that's taking it when it's coming up. Now, 51. That's not changing. I mean, barely anything as it's warming up. I'll show one more time. 118. 51 input. I haven't touched a voltage. Still 10 volts. And I'm not touching that. 51. I'm going to take this one off. I'm going to take this one off. Input goes down to 60. Actually, it is double, it looks like, huh? That went up to 120, just about double. 51, 10 volts. 0.061 output. Take it again. 100. Take it again. Now I gotta figure out this math, because how this is going, it went 60, 100, 120. So, 60, 70, 80, 90, then it went down to 40 more, then it went down to 20 more. I wonder if I take the next one, if it's going to go down to 10 more, and then you got to keep stacking. I'm not sure about how all of it yet, but either way, we almost doubled what we're pulling. And look at that input. Practically no change, whatever timing any H bridges, the variance that, that it's off, maybe it, it passed, but nothing. It's not doubling. So that's what I'm working on. It's uh, quite an interesting circuit. So stay tuned.